All right, I think we're good. I'll try to share the screen again. So. Okay, everybody can see that okay on your screens? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll get us started and then uh, we'll have others that are going to uh, uh, pitch in as well. Um, this is kind of a quick uh, step back for the big picture as we talk about branding. Um, this, um, this S curve, as it's called, uh, came out of our work with Kevin Ford and TAG Consulting. And um, if, if you look at really any organization, um, whether it be a business or a church or a do-gooder organization, even life cycles, uh, there's just a certain kind of uh, life cycle that any organization follows. There's the, the birth or inception. There's a time of growth and maturity when you increase in numbers and energy and programs if it's a church. And then you typically, after for churches, it's around 50 years where you where you hit a plateau and then you start on a, on a downward uh, decline. And that can be in terms of attendance or programs or giving any number of ways that that's measured. Uh, and this is just life cycle of organizations. And again, churches tend to last about 50 years in the growth pattern. And then they hit that uh, part where they plateau and then start to decline in various ways. What we learned with our work with uh, Tag Consulting and Kevin Ford is that in order to start a, a second uh, curve growth or growth curve, it takes some intentional changes, um, some new priorities, some new directions, uh, keep, keeping on doing the same thing that you've always done is, is not gonna uh, bring the needed change. So it's a time to evaluate and uh, what are the changes that the organization needs to make in order to start a, a hopefully a new growth curve. Um, sometimes for churches, that's recommitting to doing ministry in the community or um, recognizing that the population once served is no longer who's in the neighborhood. Any kinds of different things where an intentional change needs to be made. And the hope and the attention is with, you know, prayerful, thoughtful, studied uh, decisions, the changes that you make will start a, a new pattern of growth, whether it's attendance or energy or involvement or outreach programs, whatever it might be. Um, and so this is all kind of just high level background stuff uh, through our work with uh, Tag Consulting and Kevin Ford out of that conversation. Uh, these are things you've heard time and time again. Uh, we discerned our core values. It's kind of the idea of what is the church's DNA? What, what is unique about us as compared to maybe in other congregations? And uh, our core values are genuine relationships at the heart of this church. Uh, for many relationships here have been going on for years and years, uh, deep commitments, lasting commitments. It's a warm congregation that uh, welcomes people and values those deep and long relationships. Uh, we seem to have a heart for, for people's real needs. And so uh, one of the ways we've articulated that is God calls us to meet the real needs of real people. And that's something this congregation does is like tonight's coat drive. You had an opportunity to drop off coats uh, before picking up a meal for those in our community uh, who need a coat come wintertime. And we grow spiritually, serving, worshiping, and laughing together. There's there is a spirit of joy and participation in the life of this congregation. As we continued to work with Kevin, we, we discovered that um, we're really out of sync with our community. And so there was a refocusing of our church's efforts and direction. How do we connect with the community? How do we serve families to not only help them just survive, but thrive? And so that's kind of a broad general statement of our focus. And then we identified uh, four strategic priorities. Um, and, uh, uh, the first one you see listed there is foster awareness of and connection to community-led solutions to enable families to survive and thrive. That's the ways that we were turning out and trying to reconnect to communities. And so things like connecting with the school nearby, um, uh, deepening our commitment to uh, the homeless, like with family promise. And so, um, not just handouts, but trying to connect with uh, our community and the needs that are there and working within our congregation and other congregations to, to be of help, a strength of 
of ministry to folks. Uh, so you've seen some, some uh, decided efforts in that direction. Uh, nurture opportunities to develop relationships with each other and with God. Uh, we started some, some new groups. Some, most groups here are longstanding and we're continuing to focus on that and we'll do so in the future. Develop intergenerational relationships and in all that we do. Uh, you've heard that talked about and that culminated in the hiring of Paul Jai and uh, really trying to give an intergenerational focus. How can all ages participate in the life of the church? How can our ministries and programs be welcoming and of support and ministry to all ages? And so uh, Paul was a, a, a culmination of some of those efforts. And so we're making those kind of uh, pivots and turns. And uh, very much one that we've been, <laughs> been very important to us is the opportunities of the digital era to move the church forward. And so for example, we've moved from a paper e uh, newsletter to uh, a weekly email and lots of other ways that that's this world we live in. It's a digital world and we had to play catch up with that. So that's just kind of high level stuff, core values, strategic focus, our strategic priorities. In addition, through our work with Kevin and TAG, there was two additional priorities that the session adopted. Uh, move to more of a blended service, certainly holding on and keeping dear the traditional sacred music that's so much a part of this church and the choirs, but also in, if we're going to connect with maybe some other generations or folks that are not raised in mainline <laughs> churches, uh, bringing alongside some more contemporary forms and genres of church music and uh, a little byproduct of, of uh, the pandemic is you've seen some of that on Sunday morning, some of the things that Darlene is doing on the piano and the pieces that's selected, some of the things that Brian is doing. So you're seeing some of that. And the other major piece was the uh, rebranding effort. So that's what we'll focus on going forward in the presentation. So what is rebranding? Uh, here's a, a, a tight, concise definition. Rebranding is through messaging clarity, getting clear what we're trying to communicate, and a clear visual identity, how we are visually represented to the community. A brand communicates not only who we are, but who we aspire to be in a unified, consistent, and compelling way, both for the congregation and for the larger community. And so just a couple of brief comments about that. You know, sometimes people think branding is the bow on the package. You make all these changes and then you, and then you put the bow on the package. Well, it's that, but it's also a compass in that it guides us forward, uh, the direction we wanna go and what we aspire to do and who we aspire to be. So think of our branding as messaging clarity, visual identity, and this will become clear as we go through this. Not only who we are now, but who we aspire to be and doing that in a consistent and compelling way internally for the congregation, but also for the larger community in which we live. And why now? Uh, well, we've been involved in this visioning strategic planning process. As noted, we've taken several steps towards that, that pivot, that second S-curve. Um, Another reason is we continue to hinder ourselves if we're using outmoded communication strategy. For example, uh, being paper-based in a digital world. Um, you know, we need to be aware of the world we live in, the current trends and challenges require the, the, the methods and practices that uh, uh, we have available to us now. And uh, probably most importantly, branding is crucial for telling our story, for effective social media in a world where you're, you get your message out and who you are through social media, for differentiating ourselves in the community so we stand out, for marketing, and also for uh, gathering the congregation in a sense of unity and participation. So we say, this is what we're about. This is who we are. This is, this is what we're aiming to do. Uh, good branding helps all those aspects happen. Um, this next little uh, video is uh, a church that went through a branding, uh, rebranding process. And um, it's a, just a two minute video that I wanna share with you. And what I'd like to do is have you notice what they did, 
maybe the fresh look that they brought to their, their uh, visuals, um, what they're trying to do in the branding effort. And as you hear somebody else talk about it, uh, in this case, Restoration Church, think of our own congregation and how we might do some of these things in a similar way that fits for us. So we'll join you on the other side of this uh, video. It's just about uh, two to three minutes, something like that. Hi, I'm Amber Kress, the resident graphic designer. Today, I get to talk to you about what I've been working on for a while, and I'm very excited to share it. Restoration Church is rebranding. What does that mean? Rebranding simply means we're updating our logo, printed materials, and website to better represent our vision and our identity to the community. It's a simple concept, but it encompasses sweeping change. The first changes you will see are new logos. The main Restoration Church logo is a seed and a leaf icon with the letter R in the negative space between. The seed represents the gospel. The leaf represents the new life and growth that happens when people receive the gospel and apply it to their lives. The R stands for restoration. This is our identity. It's why Restoration Church exists. The ideas aren't new, just the art that now represents them. The new logo will also extend to our internal ministries and create sub-brands. Each ministry logo will be unique, but still be consistent with the overall church identity. The goal is to become a branded house instead of a house of brands. Unity and consistency will be an important theme during the rebranding process and going forward in all church communications and community relations. You will begin to see the new logo popping up everywhere. Signs, pens, stickers, business cards, and more. You'll be able to represent Restoration Church and raise community awareness by wearing a shirt or a hoodie with our new logo on it, or by putting a sticker on your car or laptop. How cool would it be to see the fingerprint of our church all over our community and greeting first time guests who say they came simply because they saw our church's name on a car or hoodie. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. That is our goal with the rebranding, by putting forth unified, consistent communications and raising community awareness, we can share the gospel with more people. Let's make it happen together. with you in a minute. So hopefully uh, part of what you heard in that video and saw is um, their attempt to, to better represent their vision, their identity, uh, the logo, at least at least to me, looks fresh. It, it stands out. It's not a, it's not a traditional church logo that you might see from the last couple decades. It looks fresh. It looks contemporary. It looks relevant. Um, uh, the, the visuals that that go to be a consistent message each and every time, uh, but the basic message is the same. It's how it's conveyed. It's how it's shared with other people. So think about our own church as we continue to move through this little bit of presentation here. Our, our branding team, we've been working with Yellow Box. It's a professional branding group that works with churches like ours. Um, out of that, we have a, a new name and tagline, part of which we'll share with you tonight. A uh, <laughs> logo and icon, a color palette, a brand style guide, which is how you do this in a consistent way, which fonts you use, the typography, the usage, 
how you do that in a consistent way across all your, your visual and digital communication, new website and development, social media resources, and some plans uh, we'd like to suggest for remodeling and signage and so forth. Uh, all of that comes out of our, our work with Yellow Box. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the components. Here we go. Uh, the color palette is taken from the Pacific Northwest, represents the greater Metro Tiger Northwest area here. And uh, we looked at a couple different color palettes uh, working with Yellow Box. Here's what we came up with. Um, and it's Northwesty. It's, you know, the, the, I don't know how well the colors show up on your screen, but the, the, the one on the far left is pine, uh, kind of a dark green. Wood is the brown, river is the, the lighter blue. Uh, and then, so those are the three main colors. And then the, uh, the, it's called night or it's kind of a black color. And then fresh is a cool gray. Those are the, the complementary colors. And what you get from branding folks is all those color codes that are important for doing digital work and uh, making sure it's a consistent uh, visual look that's passed out. So here's the color palette as it's called. Uh, serif typography is, uh, I'm just gonna show you a brief example, but there's this, you know, the guide tells you how to, what letters to use, so it gets pretty detailed, how to, how to present a consistent message and look each time. And so that's that serif typography. And uh, uh, the idea behind it is uh, it, 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 it has some emotion to it. It, it gives strength and style to, to uh, the logo and the eventual name that uh, is shared. And again, the, the key thing is, is so that the visuals all work together and that we use it in a consistent way each and every time we communicate internally or externally. So that's the typography. And uh, there's an example of that, uh, that font. Uh, we'll show you more in a minute. Everybody wants to know about a new name. So let's talk about that. <laughs> uh, as we're working on this, we, we, we discover that there's um, a handful of reasons a church might change its name. Um, one being to better represent the church's vision and identity to the community. Um, you know, to better represent who we are and what we're about and what we're hoping to do. Um, sometimes churches will change a name during an organizational rite of passage or when they're taking a new direction. You know, maybe that's appropriate for us. We've We've had these 50 wonderful years and we're figuring out what are the next decades about and what kind of changes do we need to make? Uh, kind of like in the Bible, when people are called to a new life or a new direction, um, Abram becomes Abraham, uh, Sarai becomes Sarah, uh, Saul becomes Paul. That's kind of a biblical idea that when you receive a new calling or a new direction that God gives, your name changes to convey a new identity, new purpose. Sometimes churches uh, change their name to uh, more closely identify with the community. Uh, another important one, to fit with the way people communicate. Uh, we live in a world of, of electronic communication, websites, social media, and uh, it's important that we have um, a name and visual imagery that works in that environment. Uh, and sometimes people change a name when it works against building awareness within the, within the community. So I guess I'm asking you to think a little bit about Calvin Presbyterian Church. As a lifelong Presbyterian, and I'm going to go out, they're going to wheel me out the last day as a, a lifelong Presbyterian. And when they put me in the ground, I'll be a Presbyterian. And so, you know, these are names that are dear and part of my by life, both professionally and personally and identity. But having said that, who was Calvin? Calvin was a, a reformer who lived 500 years ago. Presbyterian is essentially a, uh, a form of government and it's also values of theology, but it's also a form, mostly a form of government. And so that's 
that's our identifier in the uh, in the community at the moment. Calvin Presbyterian Church. So thinking about that as we kind of work through this with uh, the, the branding <coughs> group and uh, Yellow Box, uh, we, we had to ask some questions. Who is our primary target? If it is other Presbyterians who know how to, how to spell Presbyterian, we're good to go. <laughs> if it's other Presbyterians who know John Calvin is, we're good to go. But if our primary target includes the non-churched or unchurched, does the name create a barrier to them? Or does it create a bridge uh, inviting them in or to join with us? Does the name represent our church's mission, our reason for being, or something else? Um, and there was a time, you know very well, there was a time when uh, all uh, the major denominations, you would, and you'd go into town, there'd be first press or second press or um, downtown press or whatever it might be. Uh, that was the way to do things, but uh, not so much anymore. Uh, what we've learned from Gallup poll and other polls like that is that uh, there's a continuing decline of people identifying with a specific Protestant denomination, Lutheran, Methodist, Presbyterian. Um, these are uh, stats from just a little bit ago. So 50% identified with a specific Protestant denomination in the year 2000, down to 30% in 2016. So uh, we're, we're moving against the trend with a, a denominational name. Um, Americans who identify as Christian increasingly put themselves in non-denominational categories rather than identifying themselves as Lutheran, Presbyterian, Methodist, Episcopalian, Baptist, whatever it might be. An increasing percentage identify themselves as none, saying they don't have a specific identity of any kind. And so the trend is away from denominations as, as a reason for people joining. Gray Matter is another uh, consulting group that works with churches and words have connotations, emotional impact, uh, feel to them. And what they found is that when people in a, a see a denominational reference in a name, they're four times more likely to perceive that church as formal than if it has no reference. Uh, denominational reference, mostly also three times more likely to make the people see that church as old fashioned instead of uh, more contemporary or uh, in the moment. Uh, also more three times likely to make it feel like it is structured and rigid than if there's no denominational reference. And then on the positive sense, the lack of a denominational reference is also three times more likely to lead to people feel that the church is open minded. So all of that was part of our background and thinking, the, the Gallup information, research like this, that in order to go forward, it might be important for us uh, to change the name uh, for those reasons there and, and some others. So as we worked with Yellow Box, uh, we had in mind a strong verb for a name, uh, something that has a connotation of, of action, excitement, movement, instead of being static or historical or governmental, uh, something succinct that people could uh, say quickly and uh, precisely versus uh, a long name, a name that feels current and forward-looking. These are the things we kind of came up with as we were thinking about names and criteria, a name that people notice and uh, would remember. Um, a name and tagline that would fit with our core values, our focus statement, our, our priorities, and also a name that generates talking points, marketing potential, as it couples through the life of the church and our actions and activities, expressing who we are, what we're about, but also what we hope to be about, the aspirational piece. So putting it all together, what will consistent, unified messaging and visuals look like throughout the church and community? Uh, here's some examples for you. Um, here's a, a banner 
you see the colors. Uh, there's the, the blue and the, the brown or wood. Uh, the tagline would go there, the logo at the top. Uh, again, just trying to give you some visuals of what this looks like when you start putting it together. Uh, here's the prayer request cards that you find in the pews on Sunday mornings. The top would be the church name and logo. You see the same colors being used, the tagline at the bottom. Uh, here's a, a Communion Sunday uh, bulletin. Uh, the top again, church name and logo, bottom tagline, so consistent use, consistent colors, consistent fonts, consistent format across all communications, whether print or digital. That same look, logo, messaging on our website and social media and all digital communication, emails, all of that. So you have to imagine what that would look like consistently every time in every way we communicate, whether internally or externally, whether it's paper or digital. Um, and uh, looking at the Narthex, the, uh, the, the branding committee has uh, got some ideas there. and We've been in conversation with buildings and grounds about this. Uh, how would that start to impact not only our print and uh, digital communication, but even the very building itself. And uh, we have to have some lot of conversation with, with some folks, but uh, we're angling this way that based on our color palette, name, tagline, and logo, doing some work in the narthex. And uh, in the same way, when you come into an organization, whether it's a, a corporate organization or a, a do-gooder organization, Typically, you have a sense of who those folks are in that main entryway. You'll see their purpose statement, their name, their purpose, their tagline uh, prominently displayed. Um, here's our present uh, as you enter the narthex. And uh, you're very familiar with that look. There's the, the counter and the seal, uh, the doors to Fellowship Hall. And uh, here's a, a proposal we're working with. Um, removing the counter, moving into the Fellowship Hall, uh, the church name and tagline right there in front of everybody as you come in. And similar to some organization you come in that says, this is what we're about. This is who we are. This is what we're about. Uh, you see the colors, the, the blue, the, the light gray, the green. Here's the uh, area heading into the uh, uh, worship area, our sanctuary. And here's a proposal again. Um, again, using the green and the wood uh, logo prominently displayed here, church name and worship. Uh, you have to use your imagination a little bit. Let's say the, uh, let's say the church name is uh, uh, Jump Up, okay? <laughs> let's say it's Jump Up. Uh, and how that works, you know, jump up and worship or uh, <laughs> jump up church and worship or rejoice church or whatever it might be, you know, rejoice church and worship. So it's using that message in a consistent way. Um, and again, using some wood here, here's the green, some wood there as well. Uh, and I'm going to pitch to Scott at the moment. Uh, uh, Scott Richmond, you were instrumental in this thought. I wonder if I could pass it to you to go through the next little section here. You bet. Yeah, this is, hope everybody can hear me okay. So the, the rebranding effort presented some challenges and opportunities. And one opportunity that we have, you know, we went through a lot of the negative connotations that some of the existing uh, ideas about the, the church name have, but they're part of us. And it's, it's not something that we can, should, or would want to just cast aside, uh, bury somewhere, because they're important to us. It's, it's part of who we are, it's what we're about, and it's never going away. So the, the one struggle came in, what do we do with some of this heritage? How is it instead of being put away in a closet and forgotten. How can we at the same time highlight the new, put our, our new foot forward, 
but also pay pay duty to to our heritage and and in a prominent place so we we found a place uh between that that we all go through every every time we're in the church going from worship to uh coffee afterwards on a Sunday morning, it's there. So it is in a prominent place. And that space is also going to be updated as Heritage Hall. It will have the 50th anniversary of plaque. We are not leaving Presbyterians. We, we, we are going to remain Presbyterians. That again is part of us, who we are. And we, we, we should be proud of that. And we need to present that forward. We're not trying to hide it. It's just going to be in a different location, and hopefully, we get some help with people as we go forward to design this space uh, and 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 give it the the duty it deserves for our heritage. And for me, it's an exciting time to do that. And uh, that's the basic idea behind it, and what we're trying to do with the space while updating our look and uh, with logos and names and all that. So, not about encompassing. Good. Let me let me run through just a couple of quick shots for you. And, and uh, so here's that area right now. And um, uh, we move the sign for the celebration there. And as Scott alluded to, call this area Heritage Hall. Um, we'll take a quick look around here. Uh, this is the artwork in memory of uh, Reverend Lawson. And uh, of course, that's that's not going anywhere. It's, it's a um, number one, it's an important part of the life of this church uh, and the history of this congregation. Uh, Pastor Lawson's service here and his untimely uh, passing. It's also a beautiful piece of art that is there to, uh, to honor him and that time in the life of the church. So that stays right there. That goes no place. Um, here's the wall uh, that houses the elevator. So restroom on the left and that it, if you wrap around the right corner, over here, uh, that's where you uh, enter the elevator. Um, the homeless ministry um, has a grant and they have a monitor that's gonna go in there so that when homeless ministry does return here, it can be used by the guests. But when it's not being used by the homeless ministry, that will be a, a place where we can use to sign up uh, for uh, dinners or serve on a committee or serve in the homeless ministry or uh, use that for digital projection, for announcements, or all kinds of different things. Uh, for a variety of reasons, it needs to go in that spot. Uh, this is the doors heading into Fellowship Hall, and this is just a crude uh, uh, next slide just to kind of get you a, an idea of what we're thinking about. Um, there's two pieces from the nar narthex now above the doors would be the the seal the presbyterian seal and then the 50th anniversary art piece um, there you see with the doors open all part of heritage hall um, so that kind of gives you an idea of what we're thinking about you know how do we as Scott said, how do we hang on to who we've been and, and, and what's brought us to this point, and yet also look towards the future as well? Uh, thinking about exterior things as well, um, here's our corner sign. Here's the proposal, church name and logo, again, colors and font all consistently used. Uh, this is the sign that's in front of the church building. So the, uh, the drop-off area is just to the right there. In colors, uh, fonts, logo, all consistent, every place. Um, this would come down. This is on the building high above the sanctuary wall. It was hit by trees up till just a little a couple months ago. Uh, but that would come down. Uh, the the, the uh, Decal on the bus would be changed on all sides to reflect it as well. All right, so we're wrapping it up. We're getting close to the end here. Uh, we shared with you the color palette and how it will shape internal, external, digital, and print communication, change the look focus of the narthex, create new signage, 
And I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Can't quite share the new name and logo just yet. We got to keep some surprises for you. <laughs> but uh, if you promise to kind of keep it confidential, the branding team would like to share with you tonight the the new tagline. So, boy, you're you're in on almost everything, almost everything uh, tonight. And. Um, uh, we believe the new name and tagline is what this congregation is all about. Uh, through our worship and ministry, our, our focus and sense of mission, our growing connection with our neighbors and neighborhood, and what we aspire to do in our community, that we're, we're, we're not there yet, but uh, we aspire to do. And so here's, here's the tagline. Uh, so you'd have a church name and then the tagline, lifting our community. And uh, we feel like that's what we're about, whether it's the internal community of the church, uh, we lift up and care for one another, help each other through tough times, rejoice each with each other through joyous times, but also how we seek to do that in this neighborhood, in this greater community of which we are a part. How can we lift up people, help people, you know, that's that real needs of real people piece. How, how can we lift up our community with God's grace, God's love, uh, whether that's real needs like food, housing the homeless, or lifting up our community through music and our concerts, uh, all those various ways that we felt like this just encapsulates what this church is about and tends and, and intends to be about in the future. So that's the tagline, lifting our community. So there would be on the uh, that wall as you come in, the church name, and uh, we think they work together well. We got to keep the secret for now, but um, 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 there's the church name and then the lifting up the community, uh, both working together. Mm -hmm. Again, the logo and the colors, lifting our community. In some ways, you know, I, I guess I'm speaking for myself here, but I think in some ways the tagline is probably the most important part about this, mm -hmm. gathering who we are, what we intend to do as God's people and um, for one another and for the world in which we live here. So what's next? Um, I'm going to toss to Rich at this point, who's been working on the Big Reveal Sunday with Diana. And uh, Rich, you want to talk us through this last slide? Yeah. And, uh, can you hear me okay? I can, yep. Okay, good, good. So I have uh, the role today, I want to really just provide a teaser. And I, and I know that having seen the, um, the artwork and the colors and uh, everything that we, you know, we're really getting close. November 1st is uh, coming up quickly and really we really want you all to mark your calendars. I don't know about you, but it's been a long wait uh, and I believe that we are really ready to reveal finally. Uh, so mark your calendars for November 1st. Our goal is to make Reveal Sunday fun, inspirational, and above all, revealing. <laughs> so here's the best part. There will be audience con congregation participation. So you're probably asking yourself, Rich, how do I do that? Well, for your five seconds of fame, what we're asking is that uh, there's an opportunity and we, everybody, you know, has a cell phone or uh, has access to a cell phone, I'm sure. And there is a video component to your uh, smartphone. And then we ask that people take uh, a selfie of themselves or someone uh, take a photo of them uh, or take the video time of themselves, five seconds. And around the subject is what does lifting our community 
mean to them? And if you can email that, I was going to hold up, I, I thought my camera might be on, but I was going to hold up the uh, email address. It's to actually to Alex Mason at calvinpresbyterian.org, a mason at calvinpresbyterian.org. So if you can send a little email uh, video clip, we're going to work that into the uh, service and it really creates an opportunity for congregational participation. And so we really would like to have that uh, by the 21st of October. That's about a week and a half. We're gonna be sending a note out uh, on the, this week at Calvin and um, probably uh, sending notes out to people specifically that we would like to make sure they have an opportunity to share. So that's really all I can reveal. Uh, as I said, uh, we uh, anticipate it to be fun, inspirational, and once and for all revealing. So <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Thank you. So there's a dash through. Uh, Lori, I didn't get a chance to get you in. Lori Larson, anything you want to add to all that? You've been a part of this as well. So. Not really. You guys, you guys, you guys did great. Good. Good. And Judy, Judy made it as well. I know you were traveling, Judy, probably when we started. Anything to add, Judy Miller? Oh, you're still muted. I hate it when people do that. Um, I guess I just think that branding is very important because it gives us a consistent, unified way to, uh, to convey the gospel to our greater community. Um, they already have biases about Christians and about churches. They've developed those for, what, 400 years. And um, so this is a way for us to join, join with them as they communicate, their way of communi communicating and their, their way of understanding um, who we are. Good. Thank you. Let me take a few minutes. I'm sure you have comments or questions or whatever. Um, maybe just give me a wave and I can call on you. Just uh, uh, there's the address. Thank you, Rich. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thoughts or comments or questions or anything's fine. Yeah. Anybody want to chime in? Anybody want to give me a wave if you have something you want to add? So, all right, Tina, yep. So, with the new uh, name and all this stuff, are, is there going to be a time period where uh, formally Calvin Presbyterian Church, or is there going to be something that I just know right now it seems like with Templeton School and all these other things that the homeless shelter, even Calvin, is the name that's out there? there going to be a time period of a changeover or is it just going forward yeah i'm i'm sure there's going to be a you know one's i'm guessing one's going to start and and the other will kind of continue on for a while um that uh, the only the part of the experience we have is the the church by uh, the library they made a name change not long ago and it it, it took months to kind of go through that and change over and signs and everybody start to use it both both for the congregation and for outsiders so um, yeah I don't personally I don't think it's a switch I think it's got to be a, a a long runway kind of thing and uh, okay thank you yeah yeah we don't we don't want somebody looking for us and think we've, we've left or something left. <laughs> yeah. left the planet yeah we sold the building yeah we're gonna <laughs> Um, just to add, uh, when people are looking for a church to visit, 80% of them will go to the church website first. 
and uh, we'll have it set up so that if somebody's looking for a Presbyterian church in Tigard, we'll pop up. Um, I uh, can't remember who it was told me about, oh, Dee Rommel told me about her husband. Her cousin goes to a Presbyterian church in Saratoga, California. Uh, she couldn't remember the name of it. Um, I Googled and I put, because they had changed their name, I Googled Saratoga Presbyterian and up pop, pop their church with the name that they have now. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Ways to do that. Yeah. Other questions, <laughs> thoughts, reactions? Anything's fine. Yeah. Yeah, Frank. So Jim, I've seen part of this presentation before, and I must say, this is a much more complete and thorough description, and I really appreciate it. You did a great job. Everybody's done a great job. Yeah. Really appreciate it. And now that I've I've seen it enough, and being on B and G, since we went through all of what we've gone through, and we'll be part of this. Um, I can see how it's now coming together much, much better than I did before. Good. So thank you and uh, let's keep pushing forward. Good. Thanks, Frank. Yeah. Um, let me let me give credit where credit's due. That this is a group effort. And uh, I gotta tell you, all I did was took bits and pieces of what others have done on the committee, put it together and gave it to Alex and she made it look good. So um, it's been a it's been a team effort. I really appreciate people that can take those PowerPoints and speak as if they're just speaking spontaneously and you see the words in front of you. <laughs> it's like it's just natural. It's like, I wish I could do that. <laughs> anyway, good job. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Other other thoughts or comments or anything's fine. Thumbs up. Mm -hmm. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Well, okay. I, well I hope I hope it uh, generates some excitement, and and I I know the committee is invested in it, and we've briefed the session all course along the way, and others, and uh, we're continuing to brief folks, and uh, um, you know we're we're invested, of course, and excited about this. We think it's going to be. Uh, it's it's not the end all and be all of of the church's future, but it's certainly a, a, an important critical part of it to help us get the message out, help us focus internally and uh, bring that together. So uh, uh, Rich, anything to add or Scott or Judy before we close up or Lori? No, thank you. All right. Nice job, Jim. <clears throat> well, we appreciate everybody being here. Let me, uh, let me offer a quick closing prayer. Would that be okay? And, and, uh, Again, appreciate your investment and interest and commitment to Calvin and whatever it's going to be called. <laughs> and let's pray. Oh God, in many ways, what you call us to is a journey, a journey of faith, both in our personal lives and as a community, that as we move forward with you, we might be faithful in each time and era. And we certainly ask that now in the much of the work that has been done to bring us to this moment and the great future and promise that is before us as we seek to lift up not only the community of this church, but the greater community of which we are a part. You have blessed us greatly. We ask you to continue to do so, that we might give honor and glory to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you.